That's right. You can find me in the things that I have created. And so the question is, are we looking? <laughs> are we seeing God just in the everyday things that he has created? Are we seeing him in the beauty of his creation? Amen. And so... And so one thing I'm going to talk about is the lion's roar here. Yeah. And what do we think of when we think of lions? Anybody? Power. Strength. Strength. The king what of else? The jungle. Authority. Authority. Anybody else? King. King. Hunter. Okay. So I had a few things. I had... Power. Lions are powerful. Yeah. Royalty. We think of royalty, we think of lions. Amen. Okay? Kings, they have lions, statues of lions and things around them. Mm -hmm. Think of strength. Mm -hmm. They're destroyers. Oh. Mm. Wow. They're also protectors. So why am I talking about lions? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about lions because the Bible talks about lions. <laughs> Revelations 5, 1 through 5 says, Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seal and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Amen. So we're talking about Jesus, and Jesus is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Okay? So where does this come from? Why is he called that? In Genesis 49 and 9, it says, Judah, your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. Does that sound like Jesus? Your father's son will bow down to you. You are a lion's cub, Judah. You return from the prey, my son. Like a lion, he crouches and lies down. Like a lioness, who dares to rouse him? The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs shall come, and the obedience of the nation shall be his. So we see in Genesis, Genesis is describing Jesus from the beginning. Amen. And he describes him in the tribe of Judah, saying that Judah is like a lion. It says Jesus is the lion of Judah. So are we making some comparisons there? What else does the Bible say about lions? We got a imitating adversary. Right. First Peter 5 and 8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Wow. So not only does the Bible say that Jesus is a lion, but it says the devil is going around like a lion. Who remembers that commercial? Um, that Gatorade commercial like Mike yeah. like Mike I want to be like Mike yeah. be like Mike and so we felt if we drank the Gatorade we were going to be like Mike right <laughs> but could we be Mike no matter how much you want to be like something you cannot be that something and so I said why why does the devil want to be like Christ Right. because you notice he takes everything of God and tries to make it his own, but he manipulates Everything. it and he flips it and mutilates yeah. it. Everything. He perverts it. Everything. I see more hands raised in the secular concert than I do in some churches. Mm 
Why is that? Your hands raised is a sign of surrender. So who are you surrendering to? He wants the honor. He wants that glory. He wants that power. And then I realized that he wants to be like Christ because there's nobody greater. That's right. There's nobody beyond to look up to. <laughs> That's a good man. Amen. And I think one of the reasons why he hates us so much mm -hmm. is because he tried to be like him. And look what happened. Right. But yet we created lower than the angels Come on. are made to be Christ on the earth. Good. Amen. Luke 10, 16 through 18 says, Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. Whoever rejects me, rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Yes. Nothing will be able to harm you. Amen. Amen. We have the authority of Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. I believe that if the Bible describes not only Christ as a liar, but the devil like a lion, right. then we should know a little more about lions mm -hmm. to understand how they operate, right? Mm -hmm. is 120 decibels. Wow. 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 So just imagine how loud that roar is. Ooh. So five miles away, I had to Google map, right? <laughs> so, so we can understand how far away this is. Yes. So from this spot here, Very if cool. we go north, five miles is the Shell gas station on Michigan and West Beach. Wow. That's a distance, isn't it? Yeah. Five miles south is Patton's Monuments, where you can get um, memorials for your loved ones after they pass. That's on the way to Schoolcraft. Wow. If we go east, five miles is the Wendy's off Sprinkle Road. Man. Man. And if we go west, KVCC is just under five miles. Wow. So can you imagine being in one of those locations and a lion being here and being able to hear that lion from that distance? That's quite a distance. And it's saying the devil is going around like a roaring lion. So why do lions roar? Lions roar to tell other lions where they are, to show how big they are, to warn other lions from other tribes to keep away from their home territory. <laughs> you are of your father, the devil, and it is your will to practice the desires which are characteristic of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks what is natural to him. 
For he is a liar and the father of lies and have truths. Amen. That's John 8 and 44. So here we got a devil going around roaring lies. Come on. He's roaring lies. Have you heard his lies? I've heard yeah. some of his lies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll always be this way. Every day. You'll never be, you'll never be uh this. You'll never be that. Oh, you a Christian? You just did this. Right. Oh, your mom was this way. Oh, your dad was this way. Oh, your family's like this. Oh, you grew up in this neighborhood. You'll never amount to anything. Have we heard the roar? Come on. Jesus. Have we heard the roar? God doesn't love you. That's what I've heard. Mm. The world's better off without you. Wow. These are the roars, the devil. But we see that everything he speaks are lies. Right. Amen. So we can't listen to the roar. 1 Corinthians 6 and 18a says, flee from sexual immorality. Amen. That speaks to a lot of us. That speaks to me. Amen. Flee, run, take off, bolt, escape. Wow. Why? Because there's a lion on the loose. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Flee, get out of here. Do you hear the lion? Mm -hmm. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Romans 6 and 23. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the gift of God is life. But if we get in any sin, the wages are death. We are walking in the wrong territory. We are walking right. in the territory of that lion. Who is looking to devour you. He's looking to eat you. Mm -hmm. But we must submit ourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Yeah. That's James 4 and 7. Why? Because when we submit ourselves, when we surrender ourselves, when we relinquish our will to God, we say, hey, I'm in your territory, lion of the tribe of Judah. I'm in your territory. So when another lion comes to attack me in this territory, he can. Amen. Amen. Because God's going to rise up against him. Right. Yeah. When lions come into other lions' territory, and you're not big enough, oh, you're about to get wounded, you're about to get hurt, and you're about to get driven off. Right. That's why we must submit ourselves to God and stay in the right territory. Amen. The hunt. While they do not lead the hunt in a pride attack, nomadic lions are very skilled hunters since they are often forced to hunt small, very swift game. Whether in groups or alone, the lion's hunting strategy is generally slow, patient stalking, followed by short bursts of speed to attack. Mm -hmm. Lions do not have great stamina and do not do well in long pursuits. Mm -hmm. For a lion on its own, only one hunted seven is successful. <laughs> Low in the grass, edging forward. It's a key battle. Speed of 50 miles per hour. 
and with a far longer stride than the warthog, they can't fail to catch their meal. The juvenile warthog makes a tasty snack for the lions. Working as a team, up to 50% of group hunts end in a kill. It's usually the females who do most of the hunting. One female weighs as much as two fully grown men, so pride is a force to be reckoned with. A buffalo makes for a hefty meal. The lions follow a herd for long distances. Buffalo are dangerous. The lion's tactics are crucial. This is the feline hunter's front line. They move in, encircling the buffalo and split the group. A buffalo is three times heavier than a lion and has deadly horns and sharp hooves that can inflict fatal wounds. place 
fully prepared, immovable, victorious. Amen. We're not wrestling against each other. This is a spiritual yes. battle that yes. we are yes. facing. Yes. And we have to wake up and realize that what I'm facing is in the spirit. It's not yes. that person, but what's the spirit behind what I'm facing? Amen. Amen. Go ahead, go ahead. Amen. But we have to wear the complete armor of God. If you think of the knights and when they wore armor, if I just had a helmet and a boot on, how is that going to help me when I go to war? Right. If I just have a breastplate on and uh, something to cover my hand, am I still exposed? Yes. We have to wear the complete armor so that in that evil day of danger, we can stand immovable. Man. Victorious. Yeah. We can only do that with the complete armor of God. Amen. The male lions are protectors of the pride. They are the ones that will roam the territory and protect the females and cubs from other nomad male lions looking to take over or other predators that endanger the well-being of the pride. A nomad lion is a wandering lion. Right. That's what the devil is. Yep. It says he's a lion roaring. roaring around. He's looking. He's just wandering. That's what a nomad lion is. They wander looking for prize to take over. Right. They're looking. So are we giving them access to our pride? Right here in the Muscle Mart Game Reserve in Kenya. And we've got a really great situation this morning. Um, a pride of lions has killed a, uh, a young uh, kid buffalo, and they're feeding on it. And what we've been photographing here for the last 30 to 45 minutes is the pride of lions guarding this kill against the hyenas. Um, there's a lot of hyenas. There's got to be at least. 15 to 20 hyenas that are going to come in, but there's one sub-adult male lion that's with this family of this pride of mostly females and cubs. But that one male lion is literally keeping these these hyenas at bay. in the video that the little cubs were just chilling on top of the kill. Yeah. 
<laughs> they didn't even see that all these hyenas were around. They didn't even care. It didn't even bother them. Mm -hmm. So when you're in proper place, yeah. not only do you bring peace for yourself, but you bring peace to everybody that surrounds you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This lion, this male lion was probably two or three years old. Compared to a lion that we think of as a lion, five to seven years old. Mm -hmm. So this baby lion was able to ford off 20 or more hyenas simply because he stood in place. He was in proper place. James 5 and 16 says, the heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man, a believer, can accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. Are you standing in the gap? Are you? Are you protecting and remember, who are you protecting? It's just not about me. What I go through is just not about me, but it's the people behind me. It's the people that God's assigned to me that need me to stand in proper place. Yes. Amen. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, money, possessions, fame, status, whatever it is, value more than the Lord. Amen. That's Matthew 6 and 24 Amplified. Amen. In this world, you can't say, I'm going to do me and still do God. Amen. That's Amen. Amen. You can't do that. Because as we see that we have to submit ourselves to God in order to stand. When I have this I'm going to do me attitude, then that's going to pull me away from God. Because my natural, my natural self just wants to do wrong. My natural self just wants to do the opposite of what God cre has created me to do. Amen. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. When lust have conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Yes, it does. So we're drawn away. We're drawn away by our own Lust, our own entices. We're drawn away from being the protector. Yes. You can't stand in place if you're being drawn away by your own stuff. Come on, teach. That's good. That's real good. And we know that when we're drawn away, when it's finished, it brings forth death. Those hyenas are just waiting to come in. They're waiting to attack you. They're waiting to attack your family. They're waiting to attack everything you know. And so we can't be in a place where we are drawn away from being the protector. We have to be your place. These two magnificent lions, the Matimba males, have dominated their territory unchallenged for many years. In their territory live two brides, made up of females and their cubs. The brides live in security and comfort. For the cubs, every day is an adventure. They spend the day exploring and playing, protected by the Matimba males. But Lion's social life is seldom stable for long. Five young males known as the Birmingham Boys 
invade from the north, looking to take over and establish a territory of their own. The five newcomers cause chaos. The Matimbas flee. The new males kill all the cubs under a year old. This will bring the bride's females into estrus, ensuring the future of their bloodline. It is a harsh reality, but this is nature, raw and real. Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he was scattering seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Jesus said to them, do you not understand this parable? Mm -hmm. How then can you understand any parable? <coughs> the farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path. Mm -hmm. Where the word is sown, as soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Satan, he wants to kill, steal, and destroy you. That's who he is. That's right. That's who he is. He's a killer. He's a destroyer. Mm -hmm. He wants to come in and take away that which is yours. Just like the parable of the sea here. This word that's going forth either now, it says Satan wants to come and take that word from you. He doesn't want that word to take root in your heart. The destroyer wants to come. He wants to kill your hopes. He wants to destroy your vision. And he wants to destroy your destiny. And now it doesn't just stop there. Not only does he want to kill that seed that's with, within you, that offspring that's growing within you, he wants to kill it and then reproduce in the place of what he killed. Wow. So he wants to reproduce death, <laughs> depression, anxiety, mm. anger, Come on. alcoholism, whatever the case may be. He wants to reproduce. He wants to destroy the seed, the offspring God has put in you. He wants to destroy your hopes and dreams. And in his place, he wants to reproduce himself in there. Wow. Man. But that can only happen if we are not in our proper place. Those lions weren't in place to protect that pride. And because of that, their offspring died. Don't let the enemy kill what God has given you. Wow. Amen. Come on, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We can't be lured away by our own desires, mm -hmm. enticed by what's in us. We have to get ourselves correct so that we can stand with the full armor of God. As they mature, young males begin to explore the boundaries of the pride's territory. <coughs> Red has ventured out alone. This is a 
If I stuck my pinky toe, it may seem insignificant at that moment, but let me try to walk. It's gonna shift my whole gait. It's gonna shift everything in, in my normal flow, my normal way that I walk. Everything has to be shifted because of that one pinky toe. Right. And because of that, I'm shifting weight on other parts of my body that shouldn't handle that weight. Amen. That's beautiful. So we need to reach out to our brothers and sisters that we see are in battle. Because when they hurt, we hurt. Good teaching. Amen. 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 I'll conclude with this. We have a real enemy. We have a real enemy. Amen. That is looking to devour you. He's looking to take you out. And if you are not in proper place, not only is he going to kill you, but everybody under you that you're supposed to protect. God wants to give us life. And that life comes to submitting to him, submitting to his territory, saying, hey, God, I'm in your pride. And because I'm here, no other lion, no other hyena can come in your territory. Yes, sir. So, Father, I just thank you for the word that was spoken. Yes. Father, I thank you that you would even touch the hearts and minds even today, God. And just move, Lord, that you be exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I'm going to just ask just the ministry team to come up. And if you feel like you've been in a place of fighting, if you've been that lion being bit by all those hyenas,